Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. It's another inspirational Sunday morning. My name is Harold Ilham Jr. And then I got every Sunday that God will allow. We're going to come to you with 30 minutes of power, man. I suppose it started at 730. Lord, forgive me for just now getting started. This is an inspirational Sunday. It's a chance for us to break down the word that we've been given throughout the course of the week. Today's word is unstoppable faith unstoppable faith and you know where we got to come from we got to come from hebrews 11 and 1 because that is the scripture about what faith is or what faith does hallelujah not necessarily a definition of faith but a definition of what faith does now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen the amplified version says now faith is the assurance Title, D, confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. This is an unstoppable faith. So this morning, I want to encourage you to know how to operate inside of unstoppable faith. Inspirational Sunday morning still gives us key elements, things that we can use in our everyday living regarding stewardship. But on Sunday, days, God gives us an opportunity to give you a fresh word. That fresh word don't last for long, but it gives you something to encourage you, inspire you, and keep you moving along. We're talking about unstoppable faith, because when you're walking in this unstoppable faith, Hebrews 11, 6, Amplified Version, but without faith, it is impossible to walk with God and please Him, for whoever comes near to God must necessarily believe that God exists and that he rewards those who earnestly and diligently seek him. Unstoppable faith. When you move and operate inside of God's perfect will, you begin to move and operate under his strength, move and operate under his courage, move and operate under uh, his beliefs because it's no longer you. You're a vessel of honor being used inside of God's will. You should get excited that God woke you up today and are going to use you. It's going to use you inside of his will. Whatever it is, Lord, send me. That's what Jeremiah said. Here I am, Lord, send me. Glory be unto your name, God. We're talking about unstoppable faith this morning. Just to give you an idea, there's commentary in the bottom of the uh, scriptures. Whenever you're doing studying inside of God's word and you're talking about a particular thing, such as faith, you want to be able to get a better understanding throughout the scriptures of how I can use this faith. And maybe there's different levels of this faith. How does this gift come about? What happens if I lose this gift? These are things that we encourage you to do in your studying when you're going through God's word. The daily rhema word that God gives us to give to you is for this victory right now. You need a right now victory inside of your life, regardless of what's going on, regardless of the circumstances, the situations, regardless of the negative Nancy's, the doubt and Thomas's, you have to operate inside of your God's will concern. Is my head straight? God's will concerning faith. You've got to be able to move, uh, demonstrate what God would do in your life. Demonstration comes through Philippians 4.13. Watch me demonstrate. I can do all things even though things are going wrong i can do all things through christ who strengthens me even though i just lost my job this is operating inside of that unstoppable faith in spite of what the situation and the circumstances look like around you in spite of the season that god may have you going through you have to move and operate on this unstoppable faith when we talk about faith and you think about hebrews eleven six, 6 the bible says but without faith But without faith, watch it, it is impossible to walk with God and please him. During this situation or during a circumstance, during a hurdle or or, or something that's binding you down, you have to realize that it is God that gives you the strength and the courage. So you've got to learn how to cry out to the Lord. You can't cry out to your neighbors because then you got busy bodies. You can't cry out to the sister in the church because she really can't help you. Unless God directs you some other way, you need to be relying on God. Go to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. One of our classic scriptures, one that we should be living in every single day. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. Acknowledge him in all thy ways. And he, he being God, he alone will direct thy path. Let me give you Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 from the Amplified Version. 
uh, three, five, and six. Here we go. Trust in and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight or understanding in all your ways. Know and acknowledge and recognize him and he will make your path straight and smooth, removing obstacles that block your way. This is what God gives us an opportunity to move inside of his will. And when God calls you to do a particular work, calls you to a particular assignment, shows you a particular vision, he places you in a position of purpose and he grows you and gives you instructions and direction on how to get to the end result, expectations of the vision. Whenever God gives you a vision, I learned this two years ago when my pastor was preaching to Dr. Kelsey West, hallelujah, from Nehemiah. And he said, whenever a vision comes from God, there's going to be a preparation period. We have to realize that right now, at this very moment, you're in your preparation period. The end result expectation that God has given you is that now faith, that unstoppable faith. When you think about what faith does and in Hebrews 11, 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You've got to be able to be what the world would consider um, um, glory, an affirmation thinker. Well, an affirmation means I've already completed the end result task. I've already seen myself doing it. This is the world's definition of how it relates to God's word. And God says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. That end result expectation has to be seen inside of your mind. You have to be able to see yourself living healthy if you're feeling sick. You have to see yourself laying hands and destroying the enemy inside of your family's life. You have to see yourself driving a new car if that's the expectation, working that new job if, if that's the expectation, singing or dancing in front of the church because you want to give your praise and your worship unto God. But you have to first see yourself that's what faith is all about. That end result expectation that your mind can already see yourself operating in the supernatural. You can already see yourself helping those that are in need. You can already see yourself feeding the hungry. This is that end result expectation that God would have for us. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Watch this because I can see myself because why? I trust and rely confidently on the Lord with all my heart. And I do not lean on my own insight or understanding because flesh can never be saved. So when you start leaning on your own understanding, you're going to lean back in the stuff you're supposed to got rid of. You're going to lean back in the situation you're supposed to already forgot about. You're going to lean back on hurt, pain, and, and, and struggle that you already been through. Even though God says forgive and, for, and throw that other stuff in the sea of forgetfulness because when you start leaning back on your own understanding, that's like a rat being in a corner. It's got no other way to, no other place to go, no other options in life because you done cornered this joker. That joker, may not, it may not do what it know. It may not do what it learned, but it will do what it knows. And I want to say that again because you have to understand when you go back, when you lean on your own understanding, you no longer operate in God's will. You operate in what you know. And what you know sometimes can be dangerous. That's why the Bible says, do not lean on your own understanding. There's another scripture in Proverbs, a book of wisdom, says that there's a way by man that seems right and that way leads to death. When we're leaning on the everlasting, we're leaning on God's word, but we have to learn God's word. We're leaning on God's strength, but that means we have to have a relationship with God. Something intimate means I'm talking to him, praying to him, relying on him so that he can be my strength. He can be my rock. This is important because this is the faith. We walk by we walk by faith and not by sight. If everything that we seen that we were going to do, glory be unto your name, what would I need God for? So God begins to show me the end result expectation, even though I'm still sitting in the mud. <laughs> God began to show me the end result expectation, even though I don't physically have any money yet. God begins to show me the, 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 um, the end result expectation, even though I don't have the job yet. But you can see yourself, Henry Ford, who, who claims as, as, as claims Christianity, even he said in his, in his wisdom, in his finite wisdom, as one of the wealthiest men ever to live in this on this planet, an uh, innovator, Henry Ford said, if you think you can, or if you think you can, you're right. You're probably right. And he was saying that, guess what? Whatever the mind can conceive, your body can achieve because we live inside of this vessel. We're a spirit man and we live inside of the vessel. When you begin to realize that's what I am or that's who you are, you begin to operate and tell your 
spirit, your body, what to do, not your body telling you what to do. Y'all better talk to me. Glory be unto your name, guys. Listen, when we're in this preparation period, God places you in a position. He wants to grow you in that position. Part of this faith walk is growing in that position to know that God can relieve me. God can fix me. God can grow me. God can mold me. God can change me. When you realize that you're in this position of purpose, God begins to say, okay, I need you to stay right there. Psalms 1, 1, blessed, fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God is the man who does not. Because I need you to stay in position. Here's some rules you can't do. Don't walk in the counsel of the wicked, following their advice and example. Don't stand in the path of sinners, nor sit down to rest, because you want to be blessed, you want to be fortunate, you want to be prosperous, you want to be favored by God. That man or that person does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, following their advice and examples. This is something you cannot do, nor do you stand in, in the path of sinners, nor do you sit down to rest in the seat of the scoffers or the ridiculous, because what you need to be doing in this position of purpose that God has placed you in in this season of preparation he said in his law you, his precepts and teachings you need to habitually meditate on these things day and night you need to constantly be praying constantly be seeking constantly be knowing that this is the God that I serve this is how you establish this faith this unstoppable faith because you know he did it before and he'll do it again whether he did it for you or did it for them you know that he did it before and he'll do it again his law his precepts his teaching he habitually talking about you talking about me he habitually meditates day and night on God's word. He will be like a tree. Why? Because I'm sitting in position, even though it don't, even though it's raining. I'm sitting in position, even though the times are tough. I'm sitting in position, even though I've lost loved ones. I've lost my job, even though my mind don't seem right. I'm standing in position, even though I just got a million dollar contract. I'm maintaining my position, regardless of good, bad, and different. You have to maintain your position because when you do, you'll be like a tree firmly planted and fed by the stream of water. Why? Because I'm meditating on God's word day and night, which yields its fruit in season. Why do I get fruit? Because I'm maintaining my position. And sometimes it's four seasons. Sometimes it's three seasons, but I need to maintain my season, which yields its fruit and leaf does not wither. And whatever he does, talk about the person, he, she, them, or they, that maintain their position, whatever they does, whatever they do, hallelujah, Louis Ebonics, whatever they do, they prosper and it comes to maturity. This is what God is looking for us, but you have to walk in that type of faith. This is an impossible, unstoppable, remarkable faith. It is a faith walk. The minute you gave your life to Christ, it became a faith walk. The minute you believed that you got a new heart, it became a faith walk. The minute you believed that, that the Lord, that Christ is your Lord and Savior, and that he's forgiven you of your sins, it's a faith walk. And now you have to grow in that maturity of that faith walk. When you think about what God is doing for you, when you think about how God is lifting you up and changing you and molding you, just because you got saved 30 years ago mean the changing ain't stopped, the molding ain't stopped, the growing ain't stopped. Get tired of hearing your own spiritual resume and find out what God would have you to do today, right now, because this is your right now moment. This is your right now faith. This is your opportunity to move, operate, and function inside of God's unstoppable will. This is 30 minutes of God telling you, get up, get out, and be ready. Get up and do something different today. Smile at the world and with expectations that the world will smile back. That's your faith. And even if they don't, I need you to keep smiling because you know that the smile will eventually change somebody's life. We're an example. We're the salt of the earth. We're the light on the hill. Why would you turn your light off? Why wouldn't you smile at the world? Why wouldn't you beat the expectations of what somebody else thought you should be? But God says, here who I called you to be. Y'all better walk, talk, and see what God is doing because it's all an unstoppable, remarkable faith walk. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is all a faith walk. Glory be unto your name, God. It is all a faith walk. And you guys got to be ready for this faith walk because guess what? It's unstoppable. It's unchangeable. Glory be unto your name, God. Glory be unto your name, God. It ain't even us. When you go to Hebrews 11 and 1 and you understand that this is not what faith is. This is what faith does. <laughs> Glory be unto your name, God. What about today? What about right now? Here's your opportunity to do what? Walk by faith. And not by sight. Here's your opportunity to believe in God and trust in him with all thy heart. Leaning not to your own understanding. Glory be unto your name, God. Here's your opportunity to walk by faith. And everything that God tells us to do, we're going to do it by faith. Even when I look at Hebrews 11 and 1, and I look, it says, now faith is the assurance. And I'm reading, I'm reading this again because I need you to get it. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Now faith, meaning right now, is the assurance of, of, of a title, what did it say, of title deeds. 
Glory be unto your name. Confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. For by this kind of faith, the men of old gain divine approval. It goes on to give a story by faith, that is, with an inherent trust and enduring confidence in the power, wisdom, and goodness of God, we understand that the world's universes, ages were framed and created, formed, put in order, and equipped for their intended purpose by the words of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible, which means he made it from nothing. This is what faith is. He'll give you a job out of nothing, out of thin air. He'll feed you when you're hungry. He'll fix you when you're sick. He'll He'll correct you when you're wrong, but you have to know that this is God working inside of your life. Even if it looks bad, even if it feels bad, even if it hurts, the Bible says in Romans 8, 28, watch your faith walk. Uh, now things, we know that all things, we know, Romans eight twenty eight. we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and them that are called according to his purpose. So even though the enemy meant it for your bad, it's working out for your good. You have to know that. That's what the intimacy of the relationship with God that turns on the faith and now the false, it turns on and on and on. And you get more and more faith because faith navigated through your grace or grace navigated through your faith. Even James says faith without works is dead, but it's not my, it's not my uh, works that, 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 that generates my faith. It's my faith that generates my work. It's the reason why I smile at the world, even though they don't like me. It's the reason why I forgive my enemies because it's the faith walk. Y'all better talk to me. Glory be unto your name, God. By faith, Abel offered to to. God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain through which it was testified of him that he was righteous upright in standing with God and God testified by accepting his gift and though he died yet through this act of faith he still speaks <laughs> glory through this act of faith and God wants you to move operate right now through this act of faith they said you couldn't walk get up they said you couldn't see open your eyes they said you couldn't hear open your ears they said you couldn't get a job go fly out the, go pull out the application here's God operating in your faith stop believing what they tell you in your ears and start believing what God has showed you in your heart <laughs> hallelujah Glory be unto your name, God. This is unstoppable faith. This is Harold Elam Jr., Internet God. This is another inspirational Sunday morning. This is designed for you, 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 and you. This is designed that your heart may be blessed. This is designed that your courage may be increased. This is designed so that you can walk out today and know that God is with you and remember that God is with you and remember that God got you. This is a thing that we walk on faith. Glory be unto your name. It's inspirational Sunday morning. My name is Harold Dillon Jr., the internet guy. Man, my whole job is to spend 30 minutes with you so you can get rocking and rolling before you head to church. Rocking and rolling before you turn on your favorite preacher. Rocking and rolling before you get the chance to go to work. Because I want to inspire you and encourage you to know that God got you. He got you. And because of your faith, he'll keep you. Glory be unto your name, God. Glory be unto your name. The word used repeatedly in Hebrews, and we're talking about comes, um, because we're, when we think about Hebrews 11 and 6, and I want you to hear what it says, but without faith it is impossible to walk with God. Without faith it is impossible to walk with God. So this word is used repeatedly, talking about comes. Hebrews, to refer to the privilege of drawing, excuse me, drawing near to God. Here the author in Hebrews explains that faith is mandatory for those who approach him. So it's a mandatory thing that I have to know that God exists before I even come to him. Otherwise, who am I talking to? The world would declare me as being crazy. Well, I'm talking to my God. Well, who's your God? He is the great I am. Who's your God? Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. He is the King of all kings, the Lord of all lords. You you have to know this in order to define who you talking to. Other than that, who are you talking to? What God are you serving? Who are you getting your so-called blessings from? Glory be unto your name, God. Y'all better know and you better walk and you better operate by faith. I'm reading in verse 8, 11, 8. Abraham, when he was called by God, obeyed by going to a place which he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went not knowing where he was going. This is that walk by faith. And God said, you can have it, claim it. It's yours, claim it. That The baby's coming, claim it. The, the husband's coming, claim it. The wife's coming, claim it. The new house is coming, claim it. Healing to your body, to the sickness is coming. Walking is coming. Sight is coming. Claim it. 
That's what faith is all about. Glory be unto your name. And when you talk about this unstoppable faith, it means the world ain't going to stop me. <laughs> I can't. The world ain't going to stop me. It don't move and operate like that. Don't get it twisted. I fight for the right to, to stand in my position with Christ. I fight for my right to hold on to my faith. I fight for the right to be able to say, yes, God can in everything that I do, as long as I maintain my position of obedience and maintain my position of purpose. Because remember, the purpose <laughs> will always outweigh the position. Y'all better talk to me. Glory be unto your name, God. Glory be unto your name, God. <laughs> oh, I thank and I praise you. Hey, this is another uh, day's journey, God. This is a day that we thank and praise God for. The Bible writes, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's, it's inspirational Sunday morning. Good morning.